Hey, what's happening, fam? Uh, LAR movement still moving. Book entitled Lessons from a Non-Custodial Father. Amazon Kindle Create Space. Link will be in the description box below. <clears throat> Goalpost movers. You know, if somebody moves the goalposts, you, you know, we all know the rules of the game. We all are playing. And when the person who either made up the game or the person that you're playing with is not getting in their way, they change the rules midstream. You know, and because they and because of this constant change, they'll never be a winner and a loser, and that's the intention. Because when the person who either made up the rules or thought they had an advantage because of the rules winds up meeting a person who beats them at at their own game or the game that that is um, that they're playing. You know, I'm just using game as a reference then they feel some type of way, you know. Like, I remember years ago, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere with this. I remember years ago, uh, I was playing rock, paper, scissors with my son. Because adults just follow children's impulsive, impulsiveness when they do this. So we playing rock, paper, scissors, and I'm beating them. And he don't like that. So now it's rock, paper, scissors, bomb. I'm like, bomb, huh? Okay. So now, he, he figured he got a trump card. He got bomb. So then he wants to explain the rules of how bomb works. Now, okay. Then he adds bomb, and he's still losing. And then, that ain't working good enough for him. Fuck it. Rock, paper, scissors, bomb, jet. I mean, I just made jet up just now. <laughs> you know, jet is with this and this and this. And this is, it, it trumps this and this. And these are the rules for jet. I'm like, okay. And then... He still loses by his own rules, right? And then after Jet, then it's like, I'm still losing. You know what, Daddy? Fuck you. This game is over with. I'm, I'm tired of playing with your punk ass. Catch me outside, Daddy. Rock, paper, scissors, bomb, Jet. You still winning. You ain't shit. Now, I say that in reference to this happens with adults who um have conversations, whether it be conversations with their family, friends, um, <clears throat> significant others, you know, whether we have conversations about the black community or black relationships, it's a lot of goalpost moving, goalpost movers, because a person will say one thing, and if you address that issue, and they see that they, re they really weren't, their position uh, isn't as stout as the opposing position, like in a debate, you know. <clears throat> then all of a sudden, well, you know what? Let's just move the goalpost to this here. Oh, okay. Well, see, you know, okay. And they don't say you were right. They don't acquiesce to the fact that, yeah, your position is probably more sound than theirs. No, you just, let's just move the goalpost. See, well, if this is this, then what about what about this over here? And, ha, if this is like this, then it's because of this, this, is. Well, okay, well, well, my position on that would be you know, A, B, C, D. Uh, damn, that kind of that's kind of makes sense. Mm. Well, see, fuck that. Put this in practical application. <clears throat> so, a person to tell you, you know, these are the rules of engagement. You know, when you when you're dealing with me, uh, you this is what I uh, expect. These are my expectations. These are my standards. Now, when you meet these standards and expectations, the person also says, you know, when if you do these things, if you meet my standards and expectations, these are my responses to my standards and expectations. So when you meet their standards and expectations, they figure their standards and expectations may have been too high and nobody would meet them. But when they do get met, then all of a sudden, wait, uh... Now it's time for you to respond the way you said you were. Well, see, mm -mm, well, see, you didn't. Uh, sub article 127 uh, dash 23 says, you know, <clears throat> all of your efforts of meeting my standards and uh, expectations are irrelevant if you have um, red shoestrings. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is American culture. You know, this is how treaties were broken. This is how. 
you know, uh, people talk out talk out two sides of their mouth. This is where the uh, old quote that uh, people talk, white folks talk with forked tongues because they talk in the two different directions, right? And and people are constantly, you know, it, it looks bad. Same thing, you know, with some of the other sports watchers, the same issue they're having with Terrell Owens, who didn't get inducted into the Hall of Fame when he should have, you know. And it's like, mm, I thought these were all the rules and regulations. But see, under, because of this this person, all of those rules and regulations, see, it's different, though. This is different, though. Because, because I feel, the truth is, you feel some type of way, and you're, you're losing at in your own argument because your own argument confound confines you to having to take that L and you don't want to take that L because you ain't shit. And since you ain't shit, you know, let's make up something else. You know, it's, this is what with, uh, black men talk about, about the way this country set up when, you know, when back in the day, the bankruptcy laws, were set up for white people to to get away with murder financially, basically. And then when black people started catching on to, oh, okay, you could wipe all this stuff out. Then, oh, mm -mm, let's move this goalpost. Got to change. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know that's how how our political criteria is set up. You know, um, <clears throat> same thing with um, people. A lot of non-black people latching on to black struggles. You know, oh. oh, oh you know, everybody wants to, everybody who's non-black wants the parts of the civil rights movement and affirmative action, and they want to weasel their way into it, you know, but when we're back to like, okay, let, this is about us, oh, let's move to, no, it's not about you, it's about everybody, yeah, you're right, you know, because they move the goalposts, because when it's convenient for them, it's about us, you know, if they, when they need to piggyback off of us, but when they get what they need, it ain't about us anymore, it's about them. You know, because, see, under these circumstances, it's different. You know, it's about us when I need you, then it's about me when I get what I want. Uh, that's the same thing with um, the gender war, you know. I guess women probably feel that way. But I can, I can see as men, when we have conversations with women, and we say, okay, this is what's going on. And, okay, well... You got a point, but see, what about this over here? Well, that's what's going on over there, too. Damn, he got a point with that, too. You know what? But what about this over here? No, no. We're not going to keep moving the goalposts because when, because the thing about that is when you keep moving the goalposts, it pretty much is stating that you want it to be dysfunctional. This is why this country is dysfunctional. This is why relationships are dysfunctional. This is why business dealings are dysfunctional because you deal with goalpost movers who don't actually want to do square business who, who don't actually want to be men and women of their word and actually um be fair and, and honorable and have integrity and and, and more and morals you know they, they don't have good ethics because it was all talk you know in a simple way to put you know go go post Go post um, movers is, you know, if you go out with a woman, she says, if you do all of these nice things for me, and you show and you and you and you courting me or whatever, um, I reciprocate. And then you do those things, and then, well, I don't necessarily like you. I don't like the way you laughed at in the third scene of the movie. You know, it's just something about that. But we can go out again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, same thing with with parents, like parents who are um, who are overbearing to their children. They're goalpost movers too. You know, I'm gonna be so proud of you when you do that. That wasn't nothing. That wasn't nothing. I mean, that wasn't nothing. Mm -mm. You, I mean, you can do way better than that. Look, it's the, say things are like a stepping stone. Don't say. The bar is here, and then when you get there, I ah, bullshit. See what happened was that's really not the bar. I just wanted to get you that high to tell you that little shit wasn't shit. You know, and when you're a goalpost mover like that, you know sometimes it backfires for the most part because you make the person that you keep moving the goalpost on 
better and better because all you're doing is uh, is multiplying and, and exponentially multiplying your weakness because if they keep if they look at your goalpost movement as a challenge for them to get better and not as some kind of way to impress you they're going to look at it as a way to improve themselves and then they start getting better and better and better and and the the gap between their excellence and your mediocrity widens and widens and widens and widens that's why sometimes you see people who continue to move the goalposts with people because they're so mediocre that they have nothing to offer but goalpost moving. That's why I say the backfires, you know. Um, and the crazy part about it is that's part of the reason why the cream rises to the top, you know. That's why the best of the best wind up being able to be the best of the best because they, they've learned to adapt and to adjust to dealing with a bunch of mediocre goalpost movers. And, you know, those goalpost movers all of a sudden want to be excellent, exceptional people when they, that's not who they are. So that's just my thoughts on that this morning. Peace.